All right, in this page, we're going to take a quick look at how do I graph from point slope form for a linear equation and how do I graph from vertex form of a quadratic and the similarity between the two. And this is a review from Math 1 and from Math 2 for semester, getting us ready for piecewise function writing. So looking at the first equation, we are comparing it in our minds to point slope form, which goes slope first, x minus x1 plus y1. So the slope is going to be this first part that's staring us right here, and the point x1, y1 is also there in the function staring at us. So my slope of this one would be negative 4, and the point is going to be 2, negative 1. Why is it a positive 2? Remember that the formula has a negative in it, which makes that x value always the opposite. Notice that only the x is opposite when we're pulling things out of that form, that point slope form. So I'm going to go put a dot at 2, negative 1, and then count the slope of down 4 over 1 and up 4 back 1, and there's my line. How are you at graphing linear equations from point slope form? And all these graphs should be labeled and scaled. So real quick, take a minute, if you haven't yet, to go label and scale them all. And I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they're all at 7. Okay, second one, pause the video and try to graph it. All right, did you get the slope of 2 thirds and did you get the x1, y1 of negative 1, negative 4? How'd you do on that sign? Okay, so back 1 and down 4 is my starting point. Back 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4. And from there I count a slope of up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, and down 2, back 3. How'd you do? Okay, last, pause the video and try that one. Did you get a slope of negative 5 halves? Did you get a point of 3 comma 1? Go put that dot down 5 over 2 and up 5 back 2. Mental check. If it's a negative slope, my line better be going down. How did I know these were lines? Well, first of all, there's no squared with it, making it a quadratic, so it's just a linear equation when it's a plane x to the power of 1. So that's graphing from point-slope form. Now let's look at the similarity to vertex form of a parabola. All right down here we get a stretch factor. Oh, let's write out the vertex form of a parabola just like we wrote out point-slope form. So the orientation is a plus or minus in front, a value, a is your stretch, of x minus h squared plus k, where a value, your stretch, is the growth rate of your function. So similar to the slope of a linear, you've got this stretch growth of a parabola. And then just like before, you have this hk critical point. Instead of an x1, y1, any point on my parabola, I'm specifically looking for the critical point of its vertex. Okay, my stretch factor of this one, it looks like there is nothing in front of the parentheses, so it's just a stretch factor of 1 with an orientation of positive up. And my vertex follows the same behavior as pulling it out of point-slope form. This is going to be at a positive 1, negative 8. Why is it positive 1? Because of the minus in the formula, making it the opposite sign of the x value. y value stays the same. Axis of symmetry is going to go straight down that vertex at x equals 1. Here I go graphing. Graph that first point at right 1 down 8. And so this looks like it's down negative 10, 10, 10, negative 10. And I'm going to put the x and y here. 
All right, there's my vertex. From there, I'm doing a stretch of one. So out one, up one, just like the parent. Out two, up four. Where do those numbers come from anyways? You're taking an input of one and squaring it to get an output of one. Out one, up one. Taking an input of two, two squared is four. Out two, up four. Out three, square it, it's going to be nine. Out four, square it, is going to be 16. Good job. And then connect your graph. There's your parabola. Drawing that line of symmetry straight through x equals 1. Okay, let's pause the video, try the next one. I'm seeing a stretch factor of one third. I'm seeing no horizontal shift. By the way, it's an upwards orientation, positive one third. Uh, I'm seeing no horizontal shift. So the vertex is at zero, negative five, because there's no number in a parentheses with the X. Axis of symmetry is gonna be straight down that zero. So we go zero, negative five. and let's label my X and my Y. And from there, we count a stretch of one third. So the normal out one up one is gonna be out one up, boop, barely. One third of the normal one. Out two is normally up four. We're gonna go up one and one third, or four thirds. A third of the normal four. Out three is normally up nine. A third of nine would just be out three up three. So that's really one of the anchor points that people look for on a one-third stretch is that 3-3 three, three point. Because otherwise, these other ones are pretty hard to tell where they're actually going. Draw on that line of symmetry straight through zero, and you're done. A one-third stretch should be wider than the normal parent. It's a fractional stretch factor. One-third the normal speed of the parent. A equals 1 is the parent stretch, the same as a normal parent parabola. Last one, pause the video, try it. All right, did you see the negative orientation this time for that stretch factor of 2? I'm seeing a vertex of 6, 7, and an axis of symmetry is going to go straight through 6. 6, 7. From there, we go out one, down two, two times as fast as the normal parent. Out two would normally be four. So out two, down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two times the normal parent. And out three would normally be nine. So this would go um, 18, which we can't even fit on the graph two times the normal nine. And that's it. Draw in your line of symmetry. How'd you do?